Nigeria requires annually 2.2 trillion naira to bridge its infrastructural gap, which will demand a strategic and well laid out financing model. In this video, the CEO of Chapel Hill Denham, Mr. Bolaji Balogun, speaks on the dynamics of infrastructural financing in Nigeria and the role of the capital markets and pension funds. The capital markets sit very much downstream in the financing of infrastructure projects and being able to bring pension money into financing infrastructure requires an obligation for us to be able to do it in a safe, risk-managed and controlled manner. So developing that whole you know, ecosystem in this country around project developers, operators, you know, financiers, even knowledge of the asset class, I think becomes extremely important. What there is no doubt about is that there is a significant amount of projects that need to be developed in the country. If you talked about power alone, people can point at 30, 40 different power generation projects utilizing different feedstock plus transmission projects that need to be developed around the country. But how many of those projects have been taken to a bankable stage? And bankable simply means to a point where financiers, providers of capital, whether senior debt or mes you know, mes finance or alternatively equity, can commit capital comfortably knowing that they're going to be able to get their money back. And the capital markets provide us a number of opportunities. You know, infrastructure, you know, bonds clearly are, you know, the, you know, one solution that everyone has talked about. But I think that infrastructure funds actually are going to be very, very important at the beginning of our life cycle and at the beginning of bringing pension capital in particular into infrastructure assets. It's important that asset managers create products where firstly there's significant capacity and knowledge around the asset class. And it's that capacity that is taking money from pension managers who on their own really shouldn't be investing in a series of individual projects. They really need to get the diversity that participating in a fund provides. But the fantastic opportunity that I think we have is to start off trying to do that on the credit side. Firstly, that's where the biggest need is. 70% of any infrastructure project or 75% invariably is either senior debt or some you know, you know, subordinated you know, type debt. And this is really where we can begin to bring pension money through into infrastructure. But it's only possible to do so either at you know, financing close for greenfield projects or to take that money into brownfield projects because pension money needs to earn a yield almost essentially from day one, you know, you know, when it gets involved in infrastructure. But I think what is clear is that the opportunity is tremendous. There is considerable work that has been done around developing that ecosystem. But by and large, outside of power and two toll roads, we don't, you know, and the mobile telecoms projects, we don't have a really deep you know, history um, of developing you know, these projects. Over the next few years, the reason you know, that capital markets becomes imperative is that historically the way that infrastructure has been financed is the public sector is a large part of it. Commercial banks, domestic or international, are an even more you know, substantial part of it and then you have DFIs roughly doing about 10%. Going forward, Basel III will make it increasingly difficult for domestic commercial banks to begin to participate you know, in financing infrastructure. So if you looked at all the power privatizations that took place, for example, over the last you know, two, three years, the bulk of those privatizations were financed by domestic commercial banks. In another three years, that will become increasingly difficult and increasingly punitive for those commercial banks to do so. When you look at the macro conditions with all prices where they are, the government will also struggle to be a big participant and capital markets increasingly will become the largest provider of capital going forward.